Hello there you gorgeous people. I hope you're safe and I hope that you're well. In this week's video I would like us to kind of talk about failure. It's a bit of an F word that nobody talks about. We talk about success, the S word, but we never talk about the F word, about failure. And actually I want us to just kind of explore it, find out why it's so scary, find out how we react to it, and then five steps that I would like us to kind of try and think about, maybe implement for us to just better help ourselves and to embrace failure, which for some of you just might sound completely impossible. But the word says I'm possible and that means that we can at least give it a go. So failure. Failure is something that I am really afraid to say to you, but it's the truth that actually we're all going to experience whether you like it or not. Failure is something that happens and it's something that because we all experience it throughout our lives, I'm 36 and I still experience it and I know that I will too until I'm an OAP and even then I know that that's something that, you know, just happens. But actually it's from those experiences of failure that allow us to kind of pick ourselves up, however hard it might be, to brush ourselves down to build on that resilience and then to move forward. Not easy, I'm afraid, but it's most definitely, definitely doable. So what we have to ask ourselves is actually, why is failure so kind of scary for you? Is it because that your desire to have a perfect life, sometimes that's kind of portrayed on, on the internet, with media, is actually kind of something that may not be achieved? So with that particular activity, event, test, exam, subject, that actually if you don't get what you want or need, that actually that's gonna have an impact on your entire life? Is it because of your own expectations? Is it because of family expectations? And one thing that I do notice sometimes is that whilst parents and carers do have a massive impact on kind of the expectations and the pressure on, on you guys as young people, there is also a massive pressure that you guys put on yourself and that might be kind of to try and be as good as siblings maybe. It's also we've got to ask ourselves, is it kind of maybe your fear of how other people will react when you've been predicted this or you wanted to achieve this? You know, about how other people will kind of react as well as you yourself. So what we need to do is we need to think about the way that we react to that experience of failure. Are you somebody that will simply give up or are you somebody that will try again? Are you somebody that kind of just sticks within your comfort zone because actually we'd much rather not try because we know we're gonna fail rather than somebody that gives out our everything and still fails. Are you somebody that kind of avoids certain activities, events, subjects where you know there is that potential of you kind of failing? So it's about the way that we react to it. And then that means that sometimes when it comes to that failure, and I love the acronym FAIL, first attempt in learning. And there's this guy called Scott Adams. If I've got that wrong, then I'll put it in a text box now of who it is. Scott Adams has this fantastic quote, see failure as a journey, as a road, rather than a wall. So it's actually about the experience, it's about it being kind of that road, than actually just hitting that brick wall. So let's find out the steps that we can take to kind of embrace failure, and most importantly, to build on that resilience I'm going to add a card, um, a YouTube video, I call them cards, about now. And that particular video is about how to build your resilience, which again, I think is really good if we can kind of take that F word, that failure, and if we can kind of do a kind of um, um, a learning curve, building our resilience, then that will actually help us. So the first step and tip that I'd want you to kind of try and implement to at least better help yourself is we need to have a reality check. We need to actually find out in our own mind, is this a failure? 
Because sometimes what happens is it's our own perception of failure that is actually compared to a reality. So actually what we might need to do is we might need to bring things into perspective. One of the things that I always do whenever I'm in the moment of having a hissy fit or, or just kind of experiencing failure is I, genu and I genuinely do this. You ask my school kids and they'll realize that I do it, is that I genuinely will look outside at the window and it will literally be, has the sky fallen, has the world ended? because sometimes just doing that reality check will allow you to kind of put things into perspective. My second point is about the importance of you needing to kind of measure the effort that you've put into it, rather than the outcome, rather than the grade, rather than the experience, is actually just realize and kind of, kind of just assess that effort level. Not always are we gonna get everything that we want in life, it's not as simple as that, but actually it's about the effort that you put into it. So if you didn't get a job, you know, did you do enough prep? You know, did you do those mock interviews? You know, did you ask other people for, for support and input? If it's grades, and I hate talking about grades, I'm so sorry, but it's, you know, life seems to be kind of around them sometimes. But actually, did you revise? Did you ask your teachers for support? Did you go to revision sessions? I think that's the thing about school, certainly when it's you're in key stage four, so years 10 and 11 here in, um, I'm gonna go with the UK. I think it's the same in Scotland and Wales, never mind. So let's say England at least, is that actually, you know, do you go to those revision sessions after school? So yeah, make sure that, again, you kind of just look at your effort level rather than the outcome. My third point is that we all, all experience failure. If you can find somebody that has a story to tell then when they have an experience failure, then put me in touch because I would love to meet them. But actually, I'm gonna say the majority, but if not all of us in life experience failure. So actually what you might be best doing is you might be speaking to some adults, finding out what have they failed at, finding out what was the end of the world for them at once upon a time because actually it's something like that that can kind of allow us to realize that we're not the only person. We're not the only person experiencing failure. Yes, kind of the way that we react and the way that we feel, and we might feel genuine heartache, you know, at that moment, but maybe speaking to other adults, other peers, friends, that actually you'll realize that you're not the only person and you're not on your own with this particular feeling, this experience. My fourth point is actually about realizing that the way that we react and kind of move forward with that, that experience of failure is actually about the way that we talk to ourselves. So what I'd like you to do is I'd kind of like you to just check in and make sure that we've kind of got that healthy self-talk. That critic, that amygdala will be going off and it will be telling us that we're not good enough, we're a failure, um, you're embarrassment, whatever it might be, the way that your critic talks to yourself but actually what it is, is it's this kind of sense of realization that actually, is that gonna help you? And also, would you speak to your friend like that? I'd like to think not. So it's about kind of, a, kind of making sure that that, that self-talk is healthy, that inner kind of cheerleader, that inner coach, that's speaking to yourself kindly and with self-compassion. And my final point, my fifth point actually is about this is tricky, but it's with more practice it gets easier, is about kind of adopting that growth mindset. It's realizing that if we have that fixed mindset, I can't do it, um, you know, I'm in my comfort zone, I'm not gonna try again, that actually we get stuck. And my biggest thing is never stay stuck, always be do something, always be do? No, I'm gonna go again. Always do something that will allow you to kind of adapt that and adopt that growth mindset. And that growth mindset is about you kind of embracing that experience and moving on from it. That kind of growth mindset takes time and effort, I'm afraid, but actually it's kind of realizing that you don't have to stay where you're at, that actually with the experience you can move on. And actually it's about kind of learning from the past, but it's about moving towards and thinking and planning for our future. And it's just reminding yourself that actually from experiencing failure and turning them into learning curves, will actually one day might be something that you look back on and will actually be really grateful that it happened. 
I'll never forget one particular moment where I failed in life. Um, yeah, it was embarrassing. I literally um, walked into this interview and I thought I had it. I genuinely thought I had it. I, I, I thought I had it. And I sat down and I was told that I didn't have it. And I didn't know what to do first, I genuinely. I didn't know whether to laugh, cry, storm off but actually since then I'm so pleased I didn't get that job because I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now certainly with Flourish or anything so yeah that's one of my mistakes that's one of my experiences of failure there's quite a few if I'm honest but yeah that's one in particular so anyway give them a try look after yourselves and I look forward to doing a video for you next week see you later everybody Bye.